It still works. It still works. Amen. Glory to God. How y'all doing this morning? I'm trying to let y'all settle down a little bit. I think they just turned the heaters off. That's why I really don't like turning them on in the morning. Because I know once the people get in and you really... Only people call right now probably are those that's not praising. Because when you get to praise it, it just raises up that body temperature. Yes, sir. Along with a few other things that's going on. They go to fanning and fanning. I want to want to fall out. Stand to your feet all over the building. Open up your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 10 and verse 22. That's the book of Proverbs, chapter 10 and verse 22. What we want to talk to you this morning about, the blessings of God. All right. Amen. We want to talk to you a little bit about that, the blessings of God. Amen. The blessings of God. That's Proverbs. Chapter 10 and verse 22. When you have it, say, I have it. Still waiting. We'll wait on Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. I just want to look at that one particular verse. And it states, the blessings of the Lord, it make it rich, and he added no sorrow with it. Now, read that with me together. Come on. The blessings of the Lord. See, let me try something a little bit different. They're still fanning. Is that heater off back there? I understand what y'all are going through. I understand. Amen. I go through it sometimes myself. Go ahead and put the air conditioner on. Bring it down. Bring the temperature down. Let's, let's cool them off. Amen. Man, I'm going through the change of life myself. I know how to get it. Brother Andrew, some yeah, it just be flashing. Hot and cold. Hot and cold. Hot and cold. There we go. Most men don't get it. They don't know what they're going through. They just think they just hot. Get a certain age, you can start having them flashes. Man. All right, it's going to cool y'all down in a minute. Because I know sometimes Brother Charles, Deacon, Brother so they get so hot, they won't even talk. They just get quiet and say, Ooh, Lord, I'm trying to cool off in this place. All right, how y'all feeling now? Feeling okay? All right, let's say it again. Let's read it again. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. You ready? Go. Now, do me a favor, and I won't be for you long. Let's read it again. We'll read it. Like you're excited about it with some enthusiasm, amen. That you believe what the scripture says. Come on, say it. I, I, I guess that that's all right, brother Andrew. Okay, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the reading of your word. God, thank you for your beautiful people that are here, God. God, now we pray that your spirit that is very present with us, God, that he will reveal to us the hidden matter that's in your word that is for your children, Father. We thank you that you are here with us today in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. All right, you may be seated. And that's what we want to talk about this morning, the blessings of the Lord. How many of you feel blessed? Amen. Man, how many of you are blessed? How many of you know that you are blessed? Amen. See, many people think that what's written in the Bible has mostly to do with getting people into heaven or getting right with God, saving their eternal souls. It does have to do with that, but I want you to understand something. But not mostly. It is equally concerned with living on earth. Living well, living in robust sanity. In our scriptures, heaven is not a primary concern. To which earth is a tag along afterthought. In fact, let me share with you. Remember in Jesus when he was teaching his disciples to pray, he said, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Now, based on the scriptures, listen to me. Heaven is not broke. Heaven is not lacking anything. Because that's where all of our blessings come from. So I don't you think that the Bible is just concerned about us going to heaven. The Bible said rejoice that you know your name's been written in the Lamb Book of Life. But there's a whole lot more living what's going on in the Word of God that is for us. Amen? Amen. So you see in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22, God supplies most people with the personal and financial abilities to respond to the need of others. We talk about the blessings of God. I want you to know if you're taking notes. Blessing, when you talk about it in the Hebrew, defining it, it can mean the favor of God, right. the increase of God. That can be on any level. And let me tell you something. I would rather to prosper or be increased by the standards of God rather than the standards of the world. That's right. That's right. Because the standards of the world, Shemara, don't last long. But the standards of God, it lasts. Amen? Amen. And see, and, and I want to help you this morning because, see, a lot of things, Sister Jarvis, that we say that uh, God bless us with, is not from God. And I'll tell you the reason why I made that statement, Brother Dale, because I've heard people say, you know, praise God, hallelujah, God bless me with this. Whether it's a car, house, whatever it may be. But then they begin to struggle. They begin to cry. They begin to be depressed. Because they can't really afford it. How many of you have been there? Struggling with it. Can't hold on to it. But we just stood before the whole church and testified that God blessed me with it. And God gave it to me. Well, I want to share something. Let's look at the scripture again. Proverbs chapter 10. Verse 22, it says, the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. It make it rich. And look at that last part. And he, who is the he? God. He added no sorrows with it. So whatever God blesses you with, Brother Kenny, there is no sorrows attached to it. So that's how you know if it's from God or not. I know most people say I want to give an honor to God and thank God for my husband, for my wife, and all of this and all of that. And you should. But let me tell you something. Whatever God gives you, he does not add sorrow with it. Whatever God gives us, it makes us rich. Now let me let me let me let me get up under this word rich. Because you know, some of you probably thinking, well, maybe nothing I have is from God because I'm not rich. When we talk about rich in the Hebrew, think about favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God adds his favor. He adds his increase. See, when you look at rich, it doesn't mean that because you don't have a million dollars, you're not rich. You can be rich with joy. Your joy can increase. Your health can increase. Your love can increase. You know, your peace can increase. Because riches defines things as having all that you need. So the blessings of God gives you all that you need. Now it may be financially. We may have some millionaires in here. I don't know. If you are, I seriously need to talk to you after the services. God bless you. Amen. So, so when we look at this, if we all realize how God has blessed us, and if we all use our resources to do God's will, hunger, poverty would be wiped out. See, I, and I don't want to. I don't want to elaborate on this, but I am so tired. And I don't know if you feel the same. For about the last 30 years, I've been seeing these children that look like they're never going to gain weight. But you're still sending money to feed them, feed the children, feed the children. And for 30 years, been having the same kids looking like they're not getting new, no kind of nutrition nowhere. By now, I'm just saying, this is my opinion. By now, they only have some grocery stores over there. All the money that's been going over there. Amen? And am I making sense? And the reason why I can say that is because they, they, they interviewed some of those people. And those people say, you know what? They say that, and they come over here and they use our church law. Let me get off of 
this stuff. They use our children, they take pictures, they put us on TV, but we don't see none of that. I'm just warning you, okay? But I can tell you what, the 100,000 pounds of food that has been purchased through this place have been distributed out to the community. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So this is what our resources does. So whenever God gives us something, it's not just for us. It is for the kingdom of God. It is for others. Wealth is a blessing only if we use it the way God intended. Now God don't mind you going to get you a new house, a new car, some clothes, diamond rings and all of that. But don't forget about kingdom. Don't forget about his kingdom. Amen? Make sure you take care of your business in the kingdom. Everyone shout the blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. Shout it again. The blessings of the Lord. See, because this is what we, we want to get to is the blessings of God. And I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you four laws of God's blessings that was written by uh, Pastor Rick Warren. But before we go there, let's finish this part up. After, in verse 22, when you see after the word Lord, the Hebrew adds the word it. You see that? For emphasis, so the first line reads, the blessing of the Lord, it brings wealth, or the blessing of the Lord brings wealth. See, it just emphasis on what the blessings of God does. What does the blessings of God do? It, the blessings of God brings wealth. Everyone say that. The blessings of God brings wealth. See, if, if there's a question with your wealth, it's because you cannot be selfish with what God has. The word of God declares that he gives us health to make wealth. Amen? So whatever you have, if you want to see an increase in what you have, you have to start helping others. Because whatever God blesses you with, it is for others. Amen? It is for others. Now, I know most people probably have a selfish attitude by saying, you know what, God blessed the child with his own. Let me tell you something. When God has blessed you, you better learn to share it in the kingdom because once you learn that principle, then God will continue to increase you. Amen? Amen. Right. So, the blessings of the Lord brings wealth. The second line affirms the idea that wealth given by the Lord to the righteous and, and diligent is not occupied by trouble or is not acquainted with trouble. The tragedies of ill-gotten gain, and it's not with all of that. Because whenever God blesses you, the Bible again says, is that the blessings of God, it maketh you rich, and it adds no sorrow. So whatever God blesses you with, it adds no sorrow. So if it does not add sorrow, the only other thing you can answer is, it brings joy. Why? It's because whatever we have, it comes from God. That's why I tell business owners is that do not cheat yourself. Because when you give lesser or nothing from the kingdom of God, then your business will not flourish. See, these are just God principles that are in God's word. Amen? So when we look at, at verse 22, it is great foolishness to reject eternal pleasures and imperishable riches. They are attained by sorrow. Sorrow does not attach itself. So if you have a vehicle that you're paying for and it's bringing you sorrow and it's making you complain that the, the note is so high and the insurance is so high, then you need to, you need to get rid of it. Right. If you're going to complain and cry about it because that means it's not from God. Or you can just take time to say, you know what? I appreciate what I'm driving. I appreciate what I'm riding in. Thank you, God. You know, because you don't have to have a dime left over. When you look at the many people that's walking, it ought to make you rejoice. In fact, if you declare that God gave it to you, you ought to rejoice anyway and not complain. Because again, the scripture says that the blessings of God. Remember when you first got it, you shouted. Amen. You shouted and got excited and wanted everybody to know what God did. But about three months.
months later, you can't go buy that uh, shirt or that dress or that suit you really want because the vehicle is taking it all up. Well, look, do not attach sorrow to what God has blessed you with. Yes, right, right, right. Rejoice with it. Amen? Amen. See, it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm like Paul. You know, if I don't have a dime in my pocket, I'm still excited. Why? I thank God for what he has done. Because there's no sorrow. If I paid all of my bills and have no money left, when I hit that light switch, thank you, God. When I turn on that water, thank you, God. When I take a hot shower, thank you, God. When I take a bubble bath, cow gun, take me up, thank you, God. Why? Because he had no sorrow. Amen? Tell somebody and say, be thankful. See, God. Let me read that one more time. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he, God does not add sorrow. So who adds the sorrow? Glad you asked that question. We add the sorrow. We, we add the sorrow because we choose to be sorrowful or remorseful instead of rejoicing. So you can, and, and let me tell you something. When you go to being sorrowful, you begin to complain. And when you begin to complain, that turns God off. I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of like God, too. I don't like to be, I don't know about you all, but this is me. You all probably can't say it, but this is me. I don't like to be around people that complain. I, I just don't like it because, you know what? God has been too good for us, for us to complain, amen? If you believe that, give him a hand clap. Obedience is better than sacrifice. 
So it's all about our obedience. That's the first step into receiving the blessings of God. Now I ask you again. I want to pause and ask you again. Take a survey. How many of you all truly want to be blessed? Because let me tell you something. If you truly want to be blessed, you got to remember what the Bible says, Deacon Patterson. The Bible says, to whom much is given is required. So, so you have to think about when you're asking God for things and as God gives it to you. In other words, thank you, Spirit. Let me use this for an example if I will. God, you know that I need a better car, I need a bigger car. Jesus, bless me. Jesus, bless you. Now you got mom and them and everybody calling you. Can you take me? Oh, Lord, they need to come calling me. They need to buy their own. Ever since I got this car, people have been calling me. Well, look, God expects for you to help. He didn't bless you just for yourself. He blessed you to be a blessing to somebody else. Hello? Good morning. I just want to wake you up. Bless you with your house. Most people want to spend the night. I don't know a lot. I just think, oh, I don't feel like being worried with people. But look. Hello, God bless. In fact, God says you should be, you should be giving strangers a place to sleep. Can I remind you of the story of, 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 of the woman over there, uh, the barren woman that Elijah kept going, and she went to her husband and said, you know what, the man of God faithfully comes through our city. Can I get your permission to make him a place to sleep in the upper room? He said, go ahead. So she did that, and Elijah looked at me and said, you know what, this woman of God has been so great. Now watch how the blessings of God come. He said, you know what, I wonder what can I do? Look at somebody and say, I'm, I'm wondering if I can just bless somebody. <laughs> See, some of y'all say that. They always say that because they think I'm going to come back tough to bless. No, you know, so she, he said, go and ask her, what can I do? The servant came back and she said, she said, nothing, she's okay. That, and that, that's how most of us do with pride. She's okay. And, and he said, but surely, see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I, I don't have no cash money on me. Let, let me tell you. Who got some cash money on me up here? Don't worry, I'll make sure you get it back. I was going to say, Lord, I'm in trouble. And I go, so come on, bring it up here. I was going to say, Lord, I'm in trouble. Look around at all the preachers. None of us got no money. We all broke. Oh, Jesus, help us. Okay, now, let me count it first, because you know how some people, and I said you, some people will give you something. And then they'll say, no, wait a minute, Pastor. It was a twenty. Oh, it's going into the church. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Well, then you share this offering. You may do so at this moment. Just bring it on up here to me. So watch this here. So, you know, the blessings of God, that's how some of us do. When we are we're getting to this go to somebody, we just say, you know what? You know, woman of God, I just want to bless you. Now, now, most of them don't take it so willing like that. First thing, let me do it, because you may be broke. Let me do it. Now, you give it to me. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you anyway. I'm good. That, now, let me have that. That's church. Oh, wait a minute. You got the church money, so put it in there. Oh, but look, that's how most of us do. We'll turn it down because of pride. We'll say, no, I'm good. I'm good. Because we think when God sends something our way, we think that it's a handout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, baby, let me tell you something. If you got that much of pride, let me be your handout collector. Just tell them, just tell them say, no, I'm good. I'm good. Everybody say that with me. Just look at somebody and act like you're going to bless them. Tell them, I'm good. Give it to the pastor. <laughs> Bring it on. Anytime I'm preaching, don't cast it at my feet. Just put it in the bucket. I'm anointed. I can carry the bucket with me. Amen. Let it overflow with blessings. The blessings of God make it rich and it adds no sorrow. We just have too much pride for God to do anything for us. Amen? So let me, let me move on. Let me move on. So what we have to do, now look, I'm not playing though. I'm not carrying this bucket, but this is my bucket. Deacons, don't touch it. This is mine. Anybody want to write checks, make it out to Bishop J.W. Bain Sr. Anybody want to give? This, this is my bucket. That's mine. <laughs> All right, everyone shout the blessings of God. All right, now, what? Now, now I told y'all now I was going to 
because somebody's sitting here and I'm feeling somebody think I'm playing. Oh, uh, Pastor just joking. He didn't come on and be serious. Baby, if you think I ain't serious, walk up here and put it in that bucket. You would not see a deacon grab it. If you do, we're going to have problems. I'm going to do like they do on a cowboy move. I'm jumping off the stage. <laughs> so look here. Watch this here. So only Satan leaves pain and disappointment. God gives riches. He gives joy. Amen? Amen. See, if you start obeying the word of God and start doing what God says do, God will add. He will add. Amen? So it is not that the blessings of the Lord ensures freedom from tribulation in this world. We're going to have tribulation. But whatever the trial, all can be received as from the loving Father's hand. You know, Habakkuk and Paul uh, in large measures had entered into the blessings spoken in the word of God. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 and 19, he spoke about it. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 through 13, Paul spoke about it. So what I want to do is deal with these four laws of God's blessings. But I want to ask you a question. Have you ever wondered or have you ever read a promise in the Bible and wondered how could it ever come to pass in your life? Have you ever read that? You know, I, God, I'm hoping some of y'all say yes. Yeah, yeah. That let me know you reading your Bible. If you don't say yes, Lord, be in trouble, dear. Because yeah. anybody reading their Bible. But if you ever read and say, you know, Lord, I wish that can happen to me. Right. Or I wish I can have that. You know, or how, how could that, how can I get that to happen in my life? Live the life of faith. That's all you have to do is live the life of faith. You don't have to wonder about it because the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. The Bible says that we are to walk by what? Faith and not by what? Sight. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please who? So that means that if you walk by faith, you won't try to please mankind. Amen? So the four laws of God's blessing. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, I want you to know this. God say, I will bless you. See, you have to know the promises of God to know what God will do for you. Am I making sense? Because if you don't know the promise, let me tell you what gets people in trouble. It is not the credit card that gets you in trouble. They give it to you to use. Give, 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 but we ain't giving nobody. 
Uh, let, let me see if I can. can well, y'all, how many of you invite me to your house? Well, thank you. You don't have to. You don't have to raise your hands. I'm going to go there anyway. If you look in your cabinet, you will probably see canned goods that's been sitting out for two, three years. And you're still going to the store buying more and more and more of it. Eat what's in there first. Some of that chicken in your freezer is going to turn white. Because it's been frozen too long. See, what I love about God, Sister Dana, we don't have to hoard his blessings. You know why? Because God just constantly blessing us. Amen? Am I making sense to you? So you got to help somebody else. We have to quit all of this about where they want it, they need to get it themselves. If you want God to continue blessing you, be a blessing to someone else. I, I have to learn that. You know how they when you look in a closet and they say, you know what? Oh, that's my favorite one. I'm going to go on and die. And we never lose the weight. Give it to somebody that can wear it. If you ain't serious about it, amen? Because if you don't, you're going to be like me. When you button up, you know, button don't pop. You can say, oh, Jesus, what can happen here? You know what can happen. Yeah. Now, I know most of you probably ain't feeling this today. But I'm sorry. It's helping me if it ain't helping you. Amen. So let's talk about the four laws real quick. I won't hold you long. Number one. Law number one. Our blessings should flow to others. Say that. Our blessings should flow to others. The Bible teaches us that we are blessed not just so that we can feel good, not just so we can be happy and comfortable, but so that we will bless others. God told Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 2, Abraham, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. This is the first law of blessing. It must flow outwardly. See, my pastor taught me that years ago. He taught me these words. He said, John, close your hands. He said, now, nothing can come in that hand and nothing can go out. See, what God does for us, he wanted to flow outwardly. Let me call a witness. Remember the, 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 the little lad that had two fish and five loaves? Jesus took it, blessed it, multiplied it, fed the 5,000 plus their families, and then they took up everything left, and he ended up with more than what he started with. Because what God did was use what he had to bless others. But let me tell you something, when God does that, he does not forget about you. You can best believe that at the end of whatever God does, it's going to be greater than what you started with. So I'm going to start sowing my seeds now. And they start, he said, you know what? We, uh, we, you all remember the testimony? He said, we, we're going to pay it $5,000 and we're going to pay it off. Now, if you listen to his testimony, he said that they had some struggles going on. Well, what, what was it? The, the first 
500, 500, then a thousand, and, and they say, you know, where are we at now? But watch this. Because they want a home. So he said, I got to start being obedient to the word of God now. Amen. Then he come right back not long after that and said, wow, we have more now than what we have. That's how God does. That's right. Amen. See, you can't be stingy or hoary the blessings of God. You have to let it flow. Luke 6 and 38, put that in your definition. In your book, he says, give and it shall be given unto you. How? In good measure. That's the first thing he said. In good measure. Then he said, press down. Shake it together. And run it over. Shall mean. Amen. These are principles. These are laws that if we follow. I tell people, if you rob God, God looks at you as a thief. And you bring a curse upon yourself. That's fine. So if you don't want to be cursed, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not trying to make this stuff all shiny to make you feel good. I'm trying to tell you what the word of God says. If you want to experience the blessings of God, if you want to obey what his word says. Amen? If you don't know the principle of tithing, let me help you. For every hundred dollars you make, ten dollars go to God. If your check says a thousand dollars, a hundred of it go to God. If it says $2,000, 200 of it go to God. It's just that simple. If that's too much numbers for you, then every $10, when you cash your check, tell them, give it to me in all 10. And for every $10 bill you see, a dollar of it go to God. I'm trying to teach you all obedience. And watch this when he says after that. See, it's not in God's will that we struggle. Because look what he says after that in Malachi. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer. He would not let the enemy eat up your seeds. Okay, that's law number one. The first law of blessing. It must flow out outwardly. How do you bless others? By serving the need. Whether it is physical or emotional support, financial help, or practical advice. Forgive yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Ephesians, if you read that in the message version, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. Am I making sense or y'all getting this? Right. How about somebody and say, I'm getting this. Look at somebody and say, Ooh, child, let me use the ink pen. All right. Number two. When we bless others, God takes care of our needs. You all know I, I love to tell this story. I love to tell this story. I love to tell this story, brother. And it goes like this. The queen, Elizabeth, told Sir Charles, Sir Charles, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take care of some business for me. Don't worry about your business. Take care of my business. And, and if anybody you any questions, you tell them Queen Elizabeth said it. Now, the moral of the story is this. Sir Charles is a nobody. He has no authority. His business is all messed up like ours. But look at the moral of it. Now the queen takes his business. Anytime the queen takes your business, your business that was, was, was once not important to others, Look at the person on the side and say, now, nah. your business just became a hundred times important because the queen is now tending to your business. And watch this, what I love about the moral of the story, doesn't make the queen business less important because Sir Charles, no, because she's the queen. So now Sir Charles walks over and no one asks him no questions because he represents the queen. So now his business become important. What am I saying? When you allow God to take care of your business, when you take care of his, your business become the most important thing in the world. And God know that you may make a mistake with his business, but guess what? He's God enough. Because he carries power. And he says, don't worry about if you fail. You may fail, but my word will never fail. Right. Why? Because my word will do what I send it to do. I'm just sending you as a messenger. That's all Sir Charles did was go 
born to be a messenger for the queen. Now he may fall, he may get hungry, he may get weary, he may be lack, but the queen's work, he can make it that with no shoes, no shirt, hungry, dirty, smelling, but all he have to do is say, I come in the name of the queen, and they're going to accept him in just like that. What are you saying, Pastor? I ain't saying is that when you take care of God business, it makes no difference how many times you fall, what you go through through life. God's word speaks for itself. Somebody ought to shout, I don't represent God. Okay, God promised that if we will concentrate on blessing others, he'll take care of our needs. There's almost nothing that God won't do for the person who really wants to help other people. In fact, God guarantees this blessing in Luke chapter 18, 18. Jesus says, I guarantee this, anyone who gives up anything for the kingdom of God will certainly receive many times more in this life and will receive eternal life in the next world to come. So not only do God think about us in the next world to come, but he says even in this life, whatever you give up for the kingdom, God say that it's going to be taken care of. I'm almost done. Let's look at number three. But before I go to number three, let me state this. When you care about helping other people, God assumes responsibility for your problems. It's like the moral of the story. When you take up what God wants you to do, God takes up the responsibility of your problems. And guess what? You won't have a worry in the world. But how many of you know when God takes care of your business, you have no problem. And if you trust him, you won't be struggling with your business. Because God will take care of it. So watch this here. And that's a real blessing for he's much better at handling your difficulties than you are. Number three, our blessings to others will come back on us. Say that with me, our blessing to others will come back on us. Let me recap this one more time. Number one, our blessings should flow to others. That's law number one. Law number two, when we bless others, God takes care of our needs. Number three, our blessings to others will come back on us. The more we bless other people and the more we help others, the more God blesses our life. Luke 6 and 38, I just told you that, tells us, give away your life and you'll find life giving back. Mm -hmm. But not merely giving back, giving back with bonus and blessings. That's the message first. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn to give up yourself. Give up your resources. You know, and I always say this, don't give somebody a hand-me-down. Something that you don't want. You know, you know them pink pants you got three years ago from Big Mama for Christmas and you never wore them because she gave you the pink pants and a green shirt and a purple tie and you put it in the back of the closet and say, thank you, Big Mama, for the present. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, don't, don't y'all play crazy. So I know some of y'all won't say it because Christmas, Susanna is right around the corner. Socks that you got, you got a whole drawer just full of socks. Give it away. Somebody can use it. Amen? So the more you bless other people and the more you help others, the more God blesses your life. You cannot outgive God. The more you try to bless other people in the world around you, the more God says, I'm going to pour blessings out on you. We'll play, let's play a little game here. Let's see who will win. Let's see who can give the most. The more you bless others, the more I'm going to bless you in return. Let's see. Y'all want to play the game? Y'all feel like playing the game right now? I'm going to see how good y'all can bless. We'll we just play this game. Let's just see how much you all can bless me. <laughs> You like that one, huh? That sounds pretty good. <laughs> Notice I almost said bless somebody else. But I said, you know what? Somebody might really want to play this game. But you know the games we play, we call is, is keepsake. 
So don't put nothing out there you, you want back because it's not going to come back to the kid. No, I'm just joking. So the more, here's, here's number four. The more we're blessed by God, the more he expects us to help others. Now I want my preachers to know this. You see what I'm doing now? I'm just flowing in the spirit teaching the word of God. I'm not a bit more concerned about who likes what I'm doing and who don't. The expressions on their faces. Who's saying all that. I'm not concerned about that. Why? I'm not trying to kill myself to tell people stuff that they shouldn't know what they should do. I'm just trying to encourage people. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. So guess what? If all of you get up and walk out of this building... My feelings will be hurt. Not, no, no, I'm just joking. But if all of you, Brother Harry, get up and walk out this field, my feelings won't be hurt. Because I'm trying to teach you something. See, what I'm trying to teach you, when the music was playing and the singing was playing, that's when you should have been doing all your dancing. And that's what I'm, I'm training my preachers. Don't put sermons out there to make people feel happy. To make people pat you on their back. Because you know what? It ain't going to work. We need to teach people some scripture. I'll never forget a deacon told me years ago. He said, Pastor, no, he said, you know, Reverend, I need you to come to my church and teach because, you know what, I've been hollering at all my life. And now I'm an old man. I'm getting ready to die. I want to learn something about Jesus. See, because I'll tell you, I, I've been saved for a long time, and I'll tell you how the routine goes. Open your Bibles up to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Everybody open them up. Soon as you read the scripture and choose the text, everybody close. <laughs> I talked about this last week because Brother Harry waiting on the show to start. That's why we still have believers walking around here with no joy, no happiness, broke because no one has taken the time to teach them. You see other people being blessed? Guess what? God favors all of us. But we have to be taught how to receive the blessings of God. You don't get saved, Sister Johnson, and say, I'm saved, I'm a child of God now. Let me step back, let me get ready, because stuff that'll just come all around me. No, it don't work like that. Even Jesus told Peter, go fishing. So there's a principle to the laws of God. And that's what we want to have is the principles of the laws of God. If I want to be entertained, I go to a concert. But teach me how. If I'm sick, teach me how to access the healings of God's word. Amen? Amen? So watch this, and I'm done. The more we're blessed by God, the more he expects us to help others. That's law number four. You need to understand that. If you don't want to help other people, don't ask God to bless you. And if you are blessed, I can guarantee you, don't lift up your pride and think that you got it on your own. Because Job will tell you, the Lord give it, and the Lord will take it away. God will take it away if you think you did it on your own. Because the Bible said we didn't do anything to deserve God's blessing. He says all of your, all of your righteousness is, is as filthy rags in this answer. Amen? So the more we're, we're blessed by God, the more he expects us to help others. And you ought to give yourself a hand again because you know what? People in this community and surrounding communities have benefited of the 100,000 pounds of food. And you know what? I'm a recipient too, so I sure thank God for y'all. Oh, yes. So, y'all can cut into that, that uh, pork lawn. Ooh, it was tender. It was good. But there's some bang seasoning just right. And boy, look at here. Oh, God. Little rice, little gravy, butterfly, put some boot in and some dressing in them, and had some stuffed pork lines. Woo! Jesus, thank you. Took me a little knife and cut down in it and just ate it. I watched that all over. Mom got a little bit thinking about that. So I'm telling you, God is good. Tell somebody, you, got, you, you just don't understand how good God is. We're here because God is good to us, Trisha. We are what we have because God is good to us. Amen? That's right, that's right. You know, I, I love what some of you are doing. Some of you say, you know what? My child, I heard my wife tell, telling our daughters 
this. She said, you know what? Instead of buying it, made a lot of sense. Instead of going to the store, let me help you all out. Most of you probably, you know, you know what? You might need to go back to the store with your receipt. Buying all them toys. Oh. And they already still got a lot of toys around the house oh. that they ain't playing with. Yeah. And about two days after Christmas, those gonna be in the corner somewhere. Yeah. So what some of you did, you brought the best toys. I thank God for you because you're going to get an increase for that. Okay. Notice what I say. They brought the best toys that still look new and brought it and said, we want to bless some other child with this. Okay. See, that opens up a channel for you to be blessed. So some child whose parents cannot really afford it they're going to be happy. And these some nice toys. I saw one of what the little man called with the little, he played in a cartoon. Got a little pack that flies. What is it? Buzz Lightyear. I don't know. Y'all can tell at my house, grandkids all been watching Mickey Mouse. I, 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 I find myself when they not watching, I'm still sitting there watching. And what's the name of that song? What's that song? The song that they do and they dance, what's that little song they do when they get up there and dance? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hot, what is it? Hot dog dance. Hot diggity dog. Hot diggity. <laughs> Even the wife look, brother Charles and say, are you serious? You still watching it? Just get attached to it. You know, it's just, you know. Anyway, look, our blessings to others will come back on us. Number four, the more we're blessed by God, the more he expects others uh, for us to help others. Jesus said it this way in my closing point. Luke chapter 12. Much is required from the person to whom much is given. See, I thank God my truck is paid for. It's been paid for some years now. My Harley Davidson. But when I first wanted that truck, I had an Explorer, and it was paid for. I said, I sure wanted that, that, that Harley Davidson truck. And God said, you know what, you can get it. I'll bless you with it. And I'm going to tell you how, how it was like that. He said, I'll bless you with it. But now, you have to give away the Explorer. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. God say, I'll bless you with it, but now the explore, that was good. That was good, but I keep forgetting your name, but please forgive me. That was good. I said, I'll trade this two-door explore for a brand new Ford F-150 Harley Davidson with the supercharged engine. Yes, I will. I'll trade. Yes, Lord. Bless me. He said, well, wait. Everyone shout, wait. wait. See, the blessings of God being obedient and it comes with conditions. So look what he said. Okay, I'll give you that, but you have to give away this. Oh, I'm giving away why? It needed tires. Somebody shouted it needed tires. <laughs> and Lord knows the air condition wasn't working. Somebody said the air wasn't working. And the show wasn't washed. Y'all know we don't wash them like that. So guess what? I was excited because I went to a car lot and the truck was like 48000 on a sticker price on a showroom floor, but then God blessed me with it for 31000 But now wait, let me, let me back up before you get excited, because let me tell you what I had to do. He said, I, I, it, it's yours, but here's the condition. You have to give away the Explorer. Cool, God, I'll give it away. But before you give it away, guess what? You got to go and put four new tires. Yeah, right, that's yeah, right. Oh, y'all ain't smiling now. And when you go put the four new tires on it, wax it up, wash it up, put it in the shop and get the air condition fixed. At that moment, I was like, well, golly. 
Ain't got a new one because I ain't seen nothing out there I want. But I did go to the crawl. See, you can't play with me to come down with God. I went to the car lot, sit in it, looked at it, looked it over. I said, okay, I'll just thank God about it. Now, let's play a little game. Who knows what kind of vehicle I just went and looked at? Huh? A what? No, I have a Mercedes. Big, raise your hands and say it again. Say it loud. Bam. That's what I would look at. Why? I believe in the principles of the laws of God. I'm not afraid of numbers. Most of you, God says, you don't have what you want because you look at numbers instead of looking at how can I be obedient to God's word. When you're obedient to God's word, baby, you don't have to look at numbers. Why? God will take numbers and make them multiply into your favor. My musicians stepping up, they, they give me the cue when it's time. All right, pastor, it's time to cut this off. So let, let me let me let me hit that. Y'all can start playing this song. Y'all can start playing this song. I want you to know, Brother Clyde, you got a big fan base. I'm giving you to lay hands on me. I want your immunity. Because boy, yesterday I was sitting out eating and I could have sweat like it was seemed like it was a whole table of all. Tomorrow, Brooke Clyde preaching. <laughs> Look, I'm saying, well, no, I'm preaching. But Pastor Brooke Clyde preaching. We, we need to hear Brother Clyde. We want to hear Brother Clyde. I'm like, no, I'm preaching. But I got to get you to lay hands on me, Brother Clyde. I need your anointing. Okay, now watch this. So, so I can get y'all on out of here because, you know, Jesus said, much is required to whom much is given. Much is required for the person to whom much more is given. We are blessed. Everyone say that. We are blessed to be a blessing. Say it again. We are blessed to be a blessing. Tell your neighbor, we are blessed to be a blessing. Come on, y'all preaching now. We're blessed to be a blessing. So the next time you get ready to make a decision, just know that God will 